Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and today we are going to talk about a little feature of Game Maker which I have not thought about in probably well over 10 years now. So, command line arguments. What are they, what can they be used for, and how can you access them in Game Maker? So, uh, what are command line arguments? So if you have a function in a regular programming language like GML or any other programming language ever, except for maybe some of the really weird ones, uh, you have a concept of functions, uh, for example, in GameMaker that might be something like instance create. And this instance create function can take a uh, can take a couple of arguments, for example, the x position, the y position, the, the z position, depth, uh, the object that you want to create, some additional data which is optional to this function. These are functions. Functions are kind of one of the basic like units of abstraction that the whole concept of computer science is built on. Uh, they allow you to take like a bunch of like simple instructions, a bunch of simple lines of code, and then like wrap them up in a single function call. So as it happens, the rabbit hole of abstraction goes a little bit deeper. And you can actually think of your computer program as a whole or your game as a whole as a single function, like a single massive function, uh, which is in this case being invoked by like the program that is the operating system. And just like the instance create function or math functions or whatever other functions you might want to uh, you might want to call in Game Maker. When the user tells the operating system to run their game, they can also supply additional arguments to the program itself. And those are command line arguments. So, uh, as for the command line, like if you were to open up a, a terminal of some sort, uh, this is something that most users don't really have to interface with every day. I guess the theme of this video is abstraction and uh, another another big one in the computing world is like the graphical user interface so that people don't actually have to just stare at this all day. Uh, but if you've ever used something like git on the command line, for example, um, git is the name of the program and if you want to specify arguments to tell it to do something, you could say git init or like git status or something like that. And now I have an, an empty git repository in my user folder, which I don't really want. Um, oh cool, some of the Windows directories just tell git to, to like to get lost when it tries to like assess them. That's interesting. Anyway, these are command line arguments. The init is a command line argument to the git uh, program. The status, where is it here? The status is a different argument to the git program, which tells it to do something different. And you can use command line arguments either as like the direct controls, the direct instructions that you, um, that you feed into a program like this, uh, or you can use it to do things like configure behaviors or apply settings uh, when, the, when the program first starts up or that kind of thing. If you're doing something like running a program from like your, uh, your Windows desktop or whatever, you actually can still specify command line arguments. For example, if you were to, in Windows, right click, go to properties on the desktop shortcut, you could, um, you could see the command that's actually run. Um, when you click on the desktop shortcut, and then if you wanted to, you could specify additional arguments after this in the same way that, like, you had, um, like, git or whatever. I'm not going to do that now. If you run your game through Steam, which I don't have open right now, uh, Steam, uh, somewhere in the Steam settings gives you an option to do basically the same thing. Uh, which brings us around to why was I reminded this for the first time after 10 years. So I was trying to solve a particular problem in Wizard Ducks, which is that... Um, I wanted to allow the user to open a debug menu if they wanted to like test something or uh, screw around or whatever. And there's a couple different ways the games have tried to do that over the years. Uh, you might implement like a certain magic keyboard combination, like a certain secret password or keyboard shortcut or something like that. Uh, if you played a lot of video games in like the 1990s, you probably remember cheat codes and cheat codes by and large stemmed from basically hidden debug commands uh, that were left in the game after shipping. Um, I didn't want to do something like that because that's the sort of thing that someone could conceivably like do by accident and then when all the debug stuff pops out they'll probably be very confused and I don't want that. Uh, so what I decided to do instead was uh, in Wizard Ducks enable the debug menu through a command line argument uh, because that's the kind of thing that you're basically never going to do by accident if you were to, you know, you have to really go out of your way to, to do that and if you did that presumably you did it for a reason and you know what you're getting yourself into. So here I have, uh, not Wizard Ducks itself, because I wanted a simpler example here. Uh, but if you, um, this is my, my sample 2D project, as usual. And today I'm going to do something similar in the sample 2D project. So I'm going to go into the draw GUI event so that I can draw the command line arguments that the game is receiving on screen. Um, game Maker gives us two functions. One is going to be parameter count, 
and the other is going to be parameter string. Uh, parameter count is going to be a function which is going to return the number of command line arguments the program has received. Uh, so we can save our like our count equals parameter count or something like that. And parameter string is a function which will return the. Uh, it's basically a fancy array access for the like list of command line arguments that the program has received. In some programming environments, command line arguments are just accessed through direct arguments to the main function. So like int main and C or public static void main in Java or whatever. In other, usually higher level uh, languages like Python or whatever, you have to access the command line arguments in a somewhat different way that's a little bit more like this. Uh, so if we wanted to loop over the list of command line arguments that our game has received, we could say uh, for var i equals zero, i is less than arg count i plus plus. And we could, um, we could say parameter string with the, uh, the argument i, and then we could do something like this. This should be like arg name or something like that. Command line arguments are always going to be strings. They're never going to be like numbers or anything. If you want to like get a number from a command line argument, you have to take the string and convert it to a number. Um, in my case, I'm just going to draw these on the screen. So let's say draw text at like 50, 50 uh, plus like 20 times i, and then arg name. And now when I run the game, uh, you can take some guesses as to what you're going to see. I'll give you a hint. We're going to see three different command line arguments popping out on the screen. And uh, the reason for this... All right, that is, uh, that is borderline illegible. Let's, let's try with a different color. All right, so I hadn't planned ahead of time like how I was exactly going to draw the text, and I actually had to fight with it a little bit to make it legible on the screen. So I turned the font into Comic Sans, and I drew it at the bottom instead. So... Uh, we've got three command line arguments. One of them is this big long honking thing, uh, this file path to runner.exe. One of them is hyphen game, and one of them is this big long honking thing, which is a file path to something else. And I'll explain each of these in turn. So when you run your game maker game through the IDE, um, you don't actually do like a full compile of your game in the usual sense. So when you run your game through the IDE, Game Maker will package all of your sprites and all your sounds and all your everything else into uh, the data wad, which is on Windows data.win, on other operating systems, it's data something else. And um, instead of like then creating a new executable program to run, um, it will actually just run basically a, a pre-compiled version of the executable that, that lives in the runtime folder like this. And it will give it two command line arguments, which point to the data file that it wants to run. So the, that's how it knows where to find your game files. Uh, those arguments are going to be hyphen game, and then the path in the game maker temp folder to the data.win. Uh, in my case, I configure the game maker temp folders to go on a different drive so that they don't eat up space in my main hard drive. Um, in your case, if you know if you've never done that, it's probably going to be somewhere in like uh, your uh, your user folder in the app data folder somewhere. And in general, in computing, uh, the first command line argument to your program is just going to be the um, like the name of the file that you launch. So the the executable file in Windows or the um, whatever other executable file format you have on other operating systems. So when you run your game maker game through the IDE, these are the three command line arguments that you're always going to see. So that's cool. Um, if you were to build your game to an executable, it's a slightly different story. Uh, I'm going to go and hit create executable and um, I have to find where I'm going to put it. I'm just going to dump it in the same uh, project folder as like the rest of this project lives in. Uh, I have way too many, way too many things in my projects folder, which means that I should probably clean it out one of these days. Uh, there's like a uh, several hundred game maker projects in that folder. But anyway, let me go and um, extract the version of the game that we just built. Uh, yes, please. That's great. Uh, we can go into that folder. Uh, we can run base tutorial 2D, and you'll notice that like the uh, the data wad, the .win folder has been been renamed to just data.win. Uh, when we run this, we can see that instead of the hyphen game and then whatever else, uh, we just have the name of the executable. Now, if we wanted to run this through the command line, uh, we would have some additional command line arguments. I don't know why it's taking so long to stop uh, when I hit the close button. So. Uh, let's run base tutorial 2d.exe. That's got to be in quotes because there are spaces in that name. And if I don't put it in quotes, Windows will assume that the first space is like the first command line argument to a program that doesn't exist. Um, 
we can just type in like some arguments here and that is going to launch the game ourselves and we can see that our command line arguments now are base tutorial 2d.exe some arguments here all right and it doesn't include the full file path uh, like this because I didn't type it out in the in the terminal so that's a um that's an interesting place to start I'm going to I think leave all this debug information here and I'm going to go back to the create event for player here and I said I'd like to show the debug overlay if the player uh, runs the game with a debug overlay command and we can do that by saying um, let's just uh I'm going to start getting lazy with like assigning variable names and stuff now. Uh, we can say if parameter string of i uh, equals equals debug. And it's um it's tradition, although not necessarily required that you put a hyphen before these things. Oftentimes, um, command line arguments will take hyphens or uh, in Microsoft land uh, forward slashes, uh, but it's not required. So we can say if parameter string equals equals debug, uh, then we can show debug overlay true, and then the game will launch with the with the debug overlay. And if not, uh, it won't it won't be there. And that's basically what I'm doing in Wizard Arcs for debug stuff, just with a much more information. Um, since the first command line argument is going to be the name of the executable, it kind of doesn't really make sense to start this loop at index zero. Uh, it kind of makes more sense to start at, at index one because you already know what the first command line argument is going to be and it's probably not going to be useful to you. This will work if you start the loop from zero. It'll it'll just never, like, you can automatically rule it out as being what you're looking for in this case. So I'm going to start, um, I'm going to start i equals one. I'm going to start the loop at one. So let's go. And this is not something I can really test by running the game through the IDE. You know what? Can I actually, I don't suppose, and I, I'm not aware of this, but I don't suppose that there's anywhere in like game settings to specify the command line arguments to run it with. That might not be a bad thing to request because that could make it a little easier to test these things, like to have a, an optional like field down here for command line arguments. But anyway, uh, let's go and do this. I will build a new version of this game. Okay, cool. Let's delete the old files just so that we, uh, just so that we don't, have any of the old game files sticking around. Let's extract this. Uh, let's go back into the um, into the folder. Did I really leave like the super secret message from last time here? I guess I did. I forgot that was there. Uh, so if we just run the run the executable by clicking on it. So this is just going to be we only have the one argument and it's going to be like the name of the executable and we have no debug stuff at top up top. But if I were to go open up the open up the terminal uh, run base tutorial 2d with the debug uh, command line argument uh, we can start the game this way and now we've got that argument and the game has indeed launched with all this with all this debug stuff up top so that's that's pretty useful uh, there are other things that you can do with this if you have any fun ideas feel free to let me know in the comments um, I don't know if this is really the time and place to like get into how you could create um, like shortcuts and stuff with, um, with command line arguments, but I guess let me just, uh, hang on, wait, let's, uh, let's cancel that. Can I say paste as shortcut? Yes, I can. So if I'll just paste a, a shortcut to the executable here and go to properties and run this with, um, a debug in the target after that, uh, after that executable name, uh, let's do that. And if I, uh, if I'm remembering how this works, we can now click on the shortcut, which has the command line argument specified, and you can run the game in debug mode. So that's um, that's a little more user friendly than having to launch it through the command line. And again, there is a um, I guess I'll open Steam for this. So if you go to your Steam library and you like click on a game, uh, right? If you go to your game's properties over here, uh, at this uh, gear icon where it says manage in your library, and you go to properties, um. Launch options down here in general settings. These are command line arguments uh, that the user can can give the game when they want to run it, so that they can like specify extra behaviors or settings, or in my case, like a debug mode. I would show it here now um, with Wizard Ducks, except I don't believe that that build is actually up on Steam yet. It probably will be in like a few days, but um, 
Yeah, those are command line arguments. So one more thing uh, before I leave is that GameMaker actually has a couple command line arguments that it will recognize itself that you don't have to do anything for. And uh, the, uh, the list of them can be found in the manual here. I'm not going to enumerate all of them and explain what all of them do because you can just read this. It's pretty rare that you'll actually need any of these. Uh, for example, no audio can be useful for debugging. In a window can be useful if you're like having a problem with the game in full screen. Uh, output can be useful if you want to like take all of the show debug message um, output messages and everything else that happened when you when you run your game and save it to a file. Uh, this is one of those Steam ads. I can I can get rid of that for now. Um, apparently, Game Maker still supports software rendering. Which I wasn't aware of until like 10 seconds ago when I opened this list. That's interesting. And there's also a couple of uh, like switches for like weirdness with uh, with graphical hardware and that kind of thing. Um, you know what? Just for fun. Uh, no, I, I wanted to run that with with a hang on. Wait, stop. You know, this would probably have been easier if I had waited until that video I was rendering in the background to finish before trying and doing this. Uh, so, just for fun, that is the game as it uh, as it appears normally and as it sounds normally. And if I wanted to uh, launch it with the hyphen no audio command line argument, we could see that it'll start up and I am not like editing out the audio from the game or anything like that. Uh, there is actually no sound playing, so you could use that if you want to like disable the audio system for whatever reason. Um, I'm also kind of curious in uh, hyphen software. So I don't know if this is actually software rendering, like a full on software renderer, or if it's just like the vertex shader being done on the CPU and uh, all the fragment shading is still happening on the GPU. Uh, so let's go and um, all right, it's just hyphen software like this. And yeah, it works. Um, I can't visibly see anything different. If I were to go into task manager, would it tell me uh, like if a, if a program is engaging the graphics driver or anything like that? Um, I think that just opened up the properties for the, for the ex executable itself. I don't know if there's a way for me to like actually demonstrate that happening, aside from the fact that it's using 0% of my GPU. I mean, this isn't demanding anyway, but that's, uh, right, whatever. I've gone on for long enough. Uh, that is how you would use command line arguments in Game Maker, and that is a sample of things that you can do with command line arguments in Game Maker. Let me know in the comments if you have any other fun ideas for things that you can do with this. Until next time, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I like making videos on weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, so if you're interested in anything like this, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out Wizard X in the Lost Hat, which is the game that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to the Steam page can be found down below as well. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Spy Die Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.